Hello viewers and welcome to the Bug Out Bunker Kitchen and how tragic is this? I'm sorry to say it started off as a rather feeble joke about the zombie apocalypse and now it's very much the way our lives have become and I'm sorry about that, I hope you're all keeping very well etc and as Hugh Dowding said in the Battle of Britain, God willing we will prevail. Anyway, on with today's recipe which is, it's a good one and it's an excellent isolation meal, it is tinned haggis. Now I've already tried one of these, you probably saw my post on Food Tribe a week or so back, if you didn't see it, why didn't you? These were the gift of Mike Fernie from Drive Tribe. I lent him my mid-engine sports car for a few days, in return he gave me a couple of second-hand tins of haggis, but they are good. They are good, but I think they can be pimped, which is what we're going to do today. We are going to add some evil little chilies that I bought from the Thai supermarket down the road a while back. They last forever. They've got a little bit wrinkly, but they're still fine. I had one in the curry the other day. It blew my ass off. There you go. Small chili, and we're going to have it with a fried egg. The egg has become a type of currency around here, so that is a very precious thing. Now, Robbie Burns, the Scottish poet, very famously wrote his address to a haggis. It goes, fair for your honest, sonsy face, great chieftain, own the puddin' race. Now, Burns is quite difficult because it's written in the ancient Glaswegian, um, but a modern English translation would go something like, Yo, face is well bombed, sick puddin' in it, bro. The process begins with a tin opener because it is a tin, and you will be amazed at what is inside. Oh, I meant to say, sorry, I completely forgot. This is properly Scottish behaviour, as well as the chilies, which are from Southeast Asia, and the egg, which is from a farm somewhere in England. I'm going to put in a dash of whiskey. That is what you're supposed to do with haggis. It actually recommends it on the tin. This is Japanese whiskey, obviously. I expect Nicola Sturgeon's gonna come round any minute and kick my ass. No, she can't actually, can she? She can't do that. I'm completely safe from marauding Scottish people. Off with the lid. And that will introduce a problem, as you will see in a couple of seconds. It is pretty much rock solid. And, you know, how do you get it out? All you have to do is warm it up in a saucepan. The answer, I think, is, let's do this over here. Put it in the pan, and then take the other end off with the tin opener. Thus, as Richard Hammond would say. And then the whole thing will slide out, revealing, it's the cops, the rosers. No, it isn't sliding out. Hang on a minute. Let's have a look at yon salty face, haggis. Jeez, it really is rock hard. It's very cold down. Here we go. There, look at this. I hope you're getting this on the overhead shot. I hope I've put the overhead camera in the right position. I ought to say, by the way, for obvious reasons, I'm down here completely alone. I don't have Tom. I don't have Lucy Brown here telling me to say like, comment, subscribe every five minutes. It's just me. I'm filming this on a phone, an iPhone 11, uh, an iPad, um, an iPad 3 Air and a GoPro up there on the ceiling. I've stuck them all up myself. It's quite difficult putting the GoPro on the ceiling because I had to balance on here and try and work out, you know, looking at the picture on the phone while I was sticking it and it's slightly cockeyed, I apologize. But times are hard. I'm unprepared because I didn't find a wooden spoon. Yon wooden spoon, as Robbie Burns would have said. Let's put this on quite a low heat because you can't rush this. I'm not going to put the chilies in yet. I've learned from my recent experiments in Asian cooking that if I put them in too soon, I actually destroy some of the flavour. So I'll wait till the haggis has broken down a bit. It, it, it won't remain like that. There will now be a short interval. I think as an extra precaution, I'm going to turn this hot plate on at the wall. Like, comment, subscribe. See, if I say that, Lucy will have to come in at that point and she can edit out the bit where I forgot to turn the cooker on. Let us, what shall we do? Let us use this, whatever the hell that is, to turn the haggis on inside. Once it's warmed up a bit, I'll start trying to break it up slightly, but not yet. 
When I cooked the last one of these, I got it all nice and mushy, and then I turned the heat up and I stirred it around a bit and I browned it off slightly. I also added, I've got to be honest, a little bit of brown sauce, and I may do that again. Let's see how it looks. Let's find a fork, because if I have a fork, what the bloody hell have the young people done with? Oh. <clears throat> what am I going to eat? Right, I'm going to have to go, excuse me. Nothing is happening. What is haggis? You may be asking if you are, say, an American or anywhere else in the world that isn't Scotland, for that matter. It is, do you know, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's made up of um, various bits of offal mixed with a bit of onion. So I have a look at the tin. It probably says on the tin in very small Scottish writing. It says, Fair fire, honest, sonsy face, great cheat. No. Ingredients. It must be on here somewhere. The ingredients are haggis. Cooked lamb lungs with oatmeal and spices. There you are. It's lamb lungs. That's the sort of offal. I was 30% right. Good. Very good with breakfast, which is why I'm going to cook it with a fried egg. I'm now talking meaninglessly because... Nothing has happened. I'm going to pause the action. I think I might have already said this. And have a cup of tea and come back to you in a few minutes. Meanwhile, stay safe. Remember to wash your hands. Thank you. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. I hope you wash your hands as instructed. The haggis is now starting to break up in the pan. Can you see that? It's still quite a way to go. I've got the heat turned right down so that I don't ruin it. But I think we're at the point now where we can certainly add a wee dramatis afoya gangas all the way from Japan. Very excellent it is too. I'm gonna to put quite a bit in. Yeah. Right, and whilst that infuses and informs the flavor, I should chop up these little evil chilies. Hang on. Yeah, this is just fantastic. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Thank you, Scotland. This stuff in the tins, by the way, has a shelf life of around three years. And I'm sure, as Oz Clark will tell you, you can safely eat it another five years after that. Children's TV presented glasses, make sure they don't hack the fingers to pieces. Right, I'm going to chop the nubbin bits off the chilies. Thus. <laughs> there for all that whiskey is fantastic. Very, very good. Right, let's get chili chopping. Fingernail as a guide. I want nice, small pieces. This is looking very good. You seeing that GoPro up above? That's getting all nice and soft now. This is, smells delicious. The whiskey, do you know what? I'm gonna put a little bit more of that in because I'm not sure that was enough. Just a splash, there you go. The sizzles, the haggis is speaking to me. I can't understand what it's saying, obviously. If you're not from Britain, Scotland is above England, uh, below and slightly to the right of Iceland. Let's start thinking about a fried egg. Actually, let's put, let's get a plate. Let's do this properly. Plate is clean, common oven. Vegetable oil. And, and glass. The egg, a very precious commodity as I said. I'm going to crack it in the glass first, just to make sure I haven't got any bits of shell in it and to make sure it's okay. And people aren't selling hooky rotten eggs in these difficult times, they're not. That's a good one. Plate is warming up. Haggis is heating up with whiskey and chilies in it. Egg is ready to go in the pan. I haven't turned that on yet. I want to make sure this is absolutely done because once it is, it can sit here quite happily for 
Well, hours, I presume. Right, heat going up for a bit of a blast. I don't actually have a proper spatula for the egg. I mean, I did have. Again, it's going to be the fault of a young person because they're not here, they would have removed it or put it behind a cupboard or something. I've got this, I, don't, I think this might be um, a builder's tool. I'm not sure, but it will work. It will go under the egg. I'm going to do it American style, over easy, or as we would call it, easy over. Or is it the other way around? That is warming up. Don't like hot food served on cold plates. That's very poor. Yeah, look, I'll give it even more heat. Like, comment, subscribe. Am I allowed to have a taster? I think as the chef I am, I think you should probably put, oh, good. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to it because Let's egg. Power. The worktop isn't quite level, which is always annoying when you want to fry something because the oil obviously collects over at one side of the pan. But God willing, we will prevail. It's chuffing freezing down here. It's getting good. You know what, I think I'm... Whoa. Yes, that's got a bit of a muck kick on it. I think I'm right about the brown sauce. Apologies to the people of Scotland. That will just give it a slightly softer edge because, as I said, those little chilies are absolutely lethal and I've slightly overdone it. If you're gonna try this at home, I recommend you do. Um, two of those little chilies per tin will be fine. Ooh. It's got to be hot by now, doesn't it? Let's find out. Yes, it is. Yes, I know I'm using a metal implement in a non-stick pan, but I don't have a great deal of choice. Like, comment, subscribe. It's a very messy fried egg, apologies. Oh, I've broken it, it doesn't matter, it's ready. Here we go, bait off. Yowzers. Lovely traditional British breakfast, slightly broken fried egg. There's nothing odd about the way that works in that pan. That's a driver's excuse. Battered, horrible fried egg. Here we go with haggis. Oh, come on, you want it. It's gonna to be too hot, isn't it? I'm gonna put it in my mouth and it's gonna to be too hot. Mm. That is boss. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you're all bearing up. I hope you're all staying safe. I hope you're all washing your hands and all those other things and you're watching plenty of Grand Tour and Our Man in Japan and lots of Food Tribe and Drive Tribe. Like, comment, subscribe. See you next time for Bicycle Maintenance. Bet you can't wait. It does look a little bit like a cow shit, it has to be said.